We're gonna watch this video for a little bit, but not for too long, okay? This one, right? Is it going in the wrong direction? Lots of us old timers like to reminisce about the old Tarkov. Glory days when the game was simply better. Many folks laugh at those of us that discuss how the game was back in the day, pointing to silly mechanics, ridiculous bugs, and absurd metas. <clears throat> Clear examples of how the game we play now is obviously better than the game we used to play. With every update, the game has gotten slower, more realistic, more hardcore, and more complex. We have more guns, more maps, more skills, quests. We have a hideout, a flea market, a dozen new mechanics. Anybody who thinks the game was better before is just seeing the past through rose-tinted glasses. They're all just coping, trying to justify a lack coping. of skill, lack of relevance, or the inability to adapt to new challenges. The fact of the matter is, it's just a lot more complicated than that. Not only is it impossible to say which was a better game, it's also pointless. There's no realistic way the game would ever actually go back to the way it was, and that's not actually what anybody seriously wants. Like most things, it's just a bit more nuanced than even the people who think fondly about the good old days might realize. I would argue that this is another one of those cases where not even the people who are telling you what they want actually know quite what that thing is. Even though I've spent a considerable amount of time discussing Alpha with many first. of the OGs where Tarkov is now and how it compares to the game that we used to play, many agreements as well as differences of opinion amongst us, there are countless common how threads, both move. stated as well as unstated, to be found amidst these conversations. Of course, I can only really speak for myself, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Many of you might agree, many of you might disagree, and that's okay. The crucial details about why the game felt so much better back in the day are oh, not yeah. the surface level ones that many will jump to and then instantly dismiss. When I show a clip that's going to be an example of what I'm talking about, the natural tendency is to look at one or two specific glaring and obvious details and assume that that is what I'm focusing on. They see a clip of an old fight from 10.2 and the first things they notice are that there's no healing animations or that reloading magazines is instantaneous and assume that I just want everything to be faster easier or that I want them to remove those features from the game entirely. I can't stress enough how thinking this way is entirely missing the point. All of the clips that I show are going to be examples of where the game's mechanics, systems, or lack thereof combine together directly, indirectly, on purpose, or by accident to form a particular gameplay experience. The focus of this video is about how the game felt and what it was like to play around two or three years ago. and. What aspects of that experience that we fell in love with that were pivotal in contributing to its success over that time, many of us feel are no longer present in the experience of Tarkov today. I also feel strongly that these changes that so many of us longtime players have felt in the overall tone, the overall feeling and experience, are changes that if Nikita fully understood, he would be very likely to agree are not intended. Now it's easy for people to respond and say that he wants the game to be more hardcore, more challenging, more punishing, more tactical, more realistic, and then say the game is moving in that direction with all of the features and systems Ugh. that have been added over time. So if we don't like the way things feel now, then we must not like the game Nikita wants, and that's our problem. It's why I'm told I need to adapt or find another game. Now here's the thing. I don't want to adapt, but not for the reasons that everybody thinks. It's not that I don't like the intended destination of the game, it's that I don't think we're going the right way towards that destination. All of the newer individual features and balancing changes that people argue are more hardcore and realistic might be in theory, but in practice as they exist in the game now, they're completely the opposite. And what's worse, they all combine together to create a gameplay loop that I genuinely think is antithetical to what Nikita wants. I wholeheartedly believe that what I want for the game is what Nikita also wants for the game, but I and many others in the community do not think that the changes they're making are pushing it in that direction. And I think a massive portion of the community doesn't see or understand how or why. This video is an attempt to explain directly to Nikita, as well as many of the newer players that never got to experience the Tarkov of old, that in many ways myself and many of the OG veterans of the game feel the design and implementation of so many aspects of modern Tarkov go against what we understand is his intended experience. Now don't get me wrong, the Tarkov of old had plenty of its own issues and awkwardness. It had mechanics that people didn't like, 
many things needed to change. Now, in so many ways, they've made a ton of progress and things have gotten better. Again, this video is in no way saying that we want what we had then. Now, what's most important to me is that when it was at its uh, best, there was nothing else There was no serve like kits back and then. And I feel that, unfortunately, that essence has been lost. Now, the elephant that comes raid, crashing into the room every time these discussions come up is the idea of realism. Now, I don't want to dwell on this for too long because I personally believe that it's a giant waste of time. This always ends up being some pseudo-masculine, ego-stroking circle jerk where wannabe operators sitting in their basements pretending to be alpha males call anybody who disagrees with them beta cuck losers who need to go play a baby game like Call of Duty. Uh. The fact of the matter is that we're all just dudes and chicks sitting in our basements, role-playing as operators, trying to enjoy our free time playing a challenging video game. So let's just try to get this out of the way right up front. Realism is a massive spectrum that encompasses a wide range of things, some that are common, some that are miraculous, some that are unbelievable. Now, for some reason, the default from so many in the community is to imagine one specific set of circumstances, put themselves or someone like me in those circumstances and think, could that happen? Could that be done? Now, this is basically pointless. Not only because most of us have no idea what would or could happen in actual similar real-world circumstances, not only because we don't really know if any of us could or would be able to do any such things if we were put in those situations, well, game but mostly is because we are not our PMCs, and our PMCs are not real soldiers. Our PMCs are reflections of one particular type of soldier uh, gotcha. in a fictional universe created for entertainment purposes, both in cinematic form as well as in video game form. Now, if realism is the goal and it's only realistic to accept what we would do in those same situations, then the realistic Tarkov experience would be most of us in the fetal position, in the corner, in a puddle of our own piss, begging for mercy. The fact of the matter is that the vast majority of the time when members of the Tarkov community defend certain aspects of the game as realistic or not, they're simply wrong on just about every level. I get told it's not realistic that people are able to shoot as quickly as I can click my mouse, either at all or with any reasonable accuracy. And I need to look no further than Instagram, where both myself and Clean have clear counterexamples of rapid semi-auto fire with amounts of control that people say is unrealistic when it's in Tarkov. I get told that the weapon handling mechanics in the game are realistic, that real soldiers shouldn't be able to stand up while reloading. That my frustrations with how clunky and unnaturally my character manipulates the weapon, unable to smoothly transition between different firing positions, from in and out of cover, between point firing and shouldering the rifle while shooting, all of that is unreasonable oh my and unrealistic. Goodness. Just as long as we don't do anything to make the game more like Call of Duty. That game is unrealistic. It's unimmersive. It's not hardcore or tactical. Everybody's bullet spongy. The time to kill is ridiculous. It's an arcade shooter with unrealistic weapon handling. Unrealistic movement, unrealistic time to kill. Whatever we do, we have to make sure that we become nothing like Call of Duty. I get told uh, that the insane full auto recoil fun. we experience with so many of the weapon builds in Tarkov is realistic recoil. And then I look at videos from Brownells with our very own Jesse Kazam, having no trouble controlling even shorter form factor rifles fully auto. Or literally any other video on YouTube of pretty much every weapon in the game being fired with infinitely more control than we see in the game. Just as wow. long as it's not like Call of Duty, right? <laughs> I get told that the insane physical and visual recoil from shotguns is realistic and then see clips like this or even the GoPro that's loosely strapped to this guy's head, floppily bouncing back and forth significantly more than his head is, shows far less recoil than we actually get in-game. What? Whatever you do, just make sure it's nothing like Call of Duty.
I get told that it's unrealistic to expect helmets and armor to be able to block certain bullets in certain situations. And then I see footage of a Marine's helmet eating a sniper bullet in Afghanistan. Are these two guys demonstrating the effectiveness of body armor as well as the physics of getting shot? Standing on one leg and taking a 308 round from an FAL point blank to his plate as if nothing happened. There it is. Really didn't feel like much, much less than a punch. I get told it's realistic that after a short amount of time jogging or crouching and standing up a couple of times that my PMC would be completely unable to That's reposition scary. to safety, especially if they sustain injuries from gunshots. Now, even after running for less than 30 seconds with an empty backpack, some light body armor, and a rifle, my PMC should be completely out of stamina. So if he happens to be shot at and even hit, it makes perfect sense that he would be entirely unable to move to cover that he would be immobilized and should stand in place while sustaining fire to regain his stamina so he can reposition to better cover. Then I see footage of what many real soldiers are actually capable of, running 12 miles straight in the desert heat with more than 50 pounds in their backpacks without stopping to stand in place once, only taking short breaks to slow down to a brisk walking pace while regaining their stamina before they get right back to running. When I think about tactical, intense, hardcore combat situations, I don't imagine myself as someone who's going to let being a little winded or a couple minor injuries keep me from getting my ass to cover. I don't imagine a little bit of running is going to cause my PMC to just give up and let himself die. What I do imagine is a lot more like this guy, Chuck Ritter, an actual real-life Giga Chad that does what he has to do to not only keep himself alive, but to save someone else's life. It doesn't matter how much he'd been running that day, how many times he needed to crouch behind cover, how thirsty or hungry he was, how much gear he was carrying on his back, or how many rounds from a PKM machine gun he took to his body. He did what he had to do to get the job done. This dude, he's not that injured. He's got his fingers blown off, and he's got a through and through to the leg. But he's just laying there. He was scared. He said, later he said he thought he was dead. Dragging this dude, and all of a sudden the machine gun opens up from where I thought we killed him onto the platoon leader. So transition over to where I'm pretty sure this PKM gunner is. I can't see him. A PKM? I start promoting on where I think he's at. He transitions to me, strikes me on the right leg. I was on a knee. So I knocked that knee back. It felt like a sledgehammer. So I move forward. My whole body's like in a Superman position. The next round comes in and hits my my upper back right here on the, on the shoulder blade. Goes to the brachial nerve complex and the brachial artery and lodges in my lower back. And then a third round, like, nicked my butt. Alpha, we are taking effective fire. I was pissed. It was going through my head, I was like, I'm gonna kill this dude. At this point in time, I didn't feel a whole lot of pain. Is Chuck good? It felt like I got hit with a sledgehammer in the leg, and it definitely felt like it, somebody hit me with a sledgehammer in the back. I was like, okay, this isn't good. Let's get this dude out of here. Zulu, you good? I'm hit. Hey, Zulu's hit. I came around the corner, and then that's when the pain set in, and that, that wound redefined my definition of pain. Where at, Chuck? Where at? Come on back. Please, Tarkov community, I beg you, stop pretending you know what's realistic and what's not. <laughs> You've simply proven that you do not. Even if you did know what was realistic and what wasn't, stop arguing that realism is the goal of the game. There are many things that belong in the game that are realistic and many things that belong in the game that aren't. It's a game. In real life, you don't have a HUD display that pops up telling you where and to what extent you have injuries. You feel the bullet wounds and you can feel the blood. In this case, we all accept that there needs to be some abstraction of the real-life experiences into video game mechanics. At this point, you simply have to recognize that your arbitrary preferences about what things should be abstracted and what things shouldn't is not necessarily the right answer. And we also need to be very careful about how we go about addressing issues that we may feel like don't necessarily fit in the game, because in almost every case historically where we've attempted to do so, We've not actually fixed any problems and instead made the experience in normal situations under reasonable circumstances cumbersome, annoying, or next to impossible. And all of it in the name of realism. Is it really worth it? What the hell is wrong with you? Mm. Now, some people argue that I'm upset because of skill issues that my aim and reaction times just aren't what they used to be compared to all these new young kids playing the game. I can't keep up with this newer fast-paced meta. Well, I hate to break it to you, but I might be old, but I'm not dead yet. I'd be perfectly fine with much faster-paced, zero-recoil, jumping-all-over-the-place combat. In fact, I think I'd do quite well. But that assumes the game has proper movement and weapon handling to account for it. Otherwise, what's the point? 
Now, not only does the game not have that super fast-paced, hyper-precision movement in combat at the moment, but it isn't exactly what Nikita wants for the game, and I respect that. Nikita has said many times that what we see in the Raid series they created is an accurate representation of the experience he wants for players. This is the core foundational premise of my entire argument. Any of us can point out all kinds of things in the Raid series that are unrealistic or might not ever happen in real life, but that simply doesn't matter. It's fiction, just like Tarkov is a video game. The aim is not to simulate real life one for one. The aim is to immerse watchers or players in a specific experience, one that's dark, punishing, unforgiving, hardcore, and based on contemporary modern-day combat. When I watch the Raid series, none of it reminds me of the gameplay today, but so much of it brings me back to the Tarkov of old. So many scenes actually feel like they were inspired by many of my most epic, memorable moments. Watching the combat from the Raid series, we see PMCs moving quickly and quietly, partially crouched, guns held up at the ready. We see them moving through complex environments, taking advantage of these environments by stopping to crouch behind cover to survey their surroundings. We don't see them tired, struggling to move because of stamina or because they're out of breath or their arms are shaky. Can you imagine if one of these guys had to stop, lower their gun, and stand there to catch their breath? They're all able to move confidently and covertly, making use of the situation to take advantage of the element of surprise. Back in the day, we actually had the ability to ready our guns and move covertly. Every movement of our gun or footstep we made wasn't telegraphing our position to everybody on the map. This allowed for a completely different play style that's effectively impossible today. Rewarding those who adopted a more careful, slow, tactical approach, even if they were significantly undergeared. <laughs> Look at that, running, using a first aid kit, no animation, it's so funny. I remember when they introduced all the healing stuff, I was like, fuck. But I mean, like, it's all good. We don't see them stopping when they get shot at. We don't see them struggling to get on their feet to run to cover when they hear one of their comrades yell, grenade. That guy's struggling to stop, I mean, to keep moving. They have mobility, and as such, they have survivability. When they're caught in bad positions, they get on their feet and they run as fast as they can to cover, jumping, diving, sliding, doing whatever it takes to get to safety. For a stupid and irrational hatred for one game or another that people think aren't hardcore or not realistic enough to play, things like sliding or diving are seen as arcade-like rather than just fucking surviving. Back in the day, this kind of mobility was actually possible. Holy shit, look how fast he's moving. Fucking asshole. When firing their weapons, we don't see them struggling to control them. In the midst of the chaos of combat, we see them blind firing down hallways and over ledges, trying to expose as little as they can to enemy fire. When they know where the enemy is, sometimes they choose to quickly peek, lean, aim, and fire, and they're able to do this fluidly, quickly, and with precision, because if they don't, they'll die. With the addition of inertia and other balancing changes, some of the most immersive mechanics like sidestepping and leaning that used to be invaluable tools in combat have been effectively nerfed into the ground. They're simply far too slow and cumbersome to be as useful as they once were. Similarly, one of the most immersive and unique mechanics Tarkov has always had is the blind fire mechanic, reproducing exactly the kind of experience I was just talking about from the Raid series. 
Now, back in the day, we used to be able to move while blind firing, as well as blind fire while we were prone, both of which were crucial in making this mechanic actually useful in combat, but we can no longer do either, and as such, one of the best features Tarkov ever had is effectively now dead. Enemy killed. I've never when they're wounded, like we that. don't see them giving up, accepting their fate. We see them fighting for every inch, giving it everything they have to survive. We see they're able to competently handle their weapons, even with one hand, because they're either multitasking or because they've sustained injuries. Sometimes they get fucked up. They get their bells rung, their ears ringing, vision blurred, but they survive. They get their shit together, and they continue the fight. Now, interestingly enough, the old medical system, before we had healing animations, in a way acted as a primitive form of the adrenaline feature that I and a few others have been advocating they include in the game for a long time now. It actually makes a lot more sense that, at least initially, the adrenaline might completely numb the pain of your injuries, and also give you a burst of energy, allowing you to get to safety. Getting all that sprinting in now. Your stamina would be sucked right out of you. Look! See how fast you use that morphine? It used to be the case that armor was actually able to keep you alive significantly longer than it does today. Not only that, but it didn't completely destroy your mobility. Having effective armor and helmets that soaked up a decent amount of damage to the vital zones of the body was a complete game changer. Now, people criticized this era, saying that people were far too bullet spongy. But you have to recognize that with the current ballistics and health systems, the alternative is damn near an identical time to kill between no armor and all six classes of armor. So what's the point of having all of the variation in material and armor class if none of it has any appreciable impact on your survival? It just doesn't make any sense. In all of the following clips, I'm wearing class 4 or class 5 or class 6 armor. Hundreds of thousands of rubles worth of gear. You tell me if you think this gear consistently performing as you're going to see is actually going to motivate people to invest in the gear and use it rather than just go naked and take a Mosin in with them. Uh -huh. This is okay. Oh, I mean, there's no, no way I survived this spawn. Could be scavs. When scabs are too turned up. Now the benefits of having armor that actually works, coupled with giving your PMC the ability to actually control their weapon and their bodies reasonably under Back fire, results in much moves, more chaotic and intense situations where your success is based on skill, not RNG Insta or other factors HP. outside of your Kay. control. So many <laughs> elements of Tarkov combat are awesome and add to that chaos. But right now, they're all stacked on top of one another and turned up to 11. So every single fight feels like a complete clusterfuck. In so many of these situations, it doesn't feel good to lose, and it even doesn't feel good to win. <laughs> Completely jacked. Oh, nice shooting. I got lucky. That wasn't skill. Combined together, heavily randomized, exaggerated good recoil distance. with poor lighting, vision blurring, aim punch, overdramatic weapon sway while moving, 
and the vast majority of CQB fights these days feel like a complete oh, coin nice toss. Shots. You might as well close your eyes and let Jesus take the wheel. Couple that mm -hmm. with the lack of mobility caused by the weight system, way too drastic stamina drain while running, while crouching, as well as the stamina burn every time you get hit. This is, in my opinion, arguably the worst aspect of modern Tarkov. It's why I feel combat has been completely ruined. I love how I like... Unreal, dude. Sounds like he's fine. It sounds like, uh, Sounds like Judd find the scav. Not working. Yeah, I know. Like Pre weight system, this game one, was one the more. best game I have ever played. <laughs> one down. Pre weight system, huh? Uh, my problem is. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me how, like, you go in with, like, you have to go in with, like, a ridiculously light loadout just to not be overweight when you go into a raid. I think it's a little crazy, but, yeah. You know me and the inertia thing. I've already complained about it a hundred times. <laughs> oh, never mind. Look at the stamina bar. I just die. Because I can't run. Uh oh. He's gonna die to left spawn. Right in front of you. No shot. He loses this real quick. Hurry. I killed him. I heard it. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna die here because stamina is garbage. Oh. Oh. When you actually feel as if your armor has an appreciable impact on your survival chances, you're much more likely to want to take out and use the really cool ultra-rare items that you'd otherwise wouldn't feel comfortable using. Think about all the things that you leave in your stash and never use because you simply don't feel confident in using them. Now, all in all, having a longer time to kill and giving your PMC more control over their bodies and their weapons during a fight makes you feel like a badass that can take a beating, like our friend Chuck Ritter, as well as our PMCs that we see in the raid series. The better player is rewarded, and the game is better off for it. At this point, I'm going to leave you with a few parting thoughts. Now, I'm going to okay. be honest with you guys. I had a lot more that I wanted to say in this video. I planned on preemptively addressing some of the criticisms that I knew people were going to levy. I wanted to talk more about the game's respect for our time, both in and outside of raids. I wanted to talk about some of the issues I feel there are with the economy, the metas around looting, pre-metting, stims, energy, hydration, counter arguments about the game being an RPG, and as such, there should be a reliance and focus on skills. And honestly, I'm just kind of exhausted. 
I'm exhausted from all of the bullshit that this wipe has thrown at me. Tired, for making the place. mistake of taking on the impossible endeavor of having conversations like these with an ever-growing community. To all the folks that dislike this video and leave toxic, valueless comments, thanks for the laugh and thanks for the bump in the algorithm. All engagement mm -hmm. helps. To everybody else who enjoyed this little rant down memory lane, to anybody who learned something, who had their mind changed, or who even sat and listened openly to a different perspective they still might not agree with, thank you. To all of the folks that silently enjoy the content, perhaps they leave a like, maybe share it with their friends and move on with their day just like I do when I consume most of the content I enjoy, thank you as well. To all of my patrons that help support me and keep me going to make content like this despite all of my trials and tribulations, thank you. You're all legends. I'm going to be giving all of my patrons access to the original 20 minute intro of this video. There's a bit of overlap that I ended up keeping, but there's a decent chunk in there that talks about some of the core differences between what it was like to be a new player back in the day and what I think it's like to be a new player today. I was originally going to scrap the whole thing, but a few of my patrons mentioned that they would like to give it a look. That guy just so swapped his I'd hand, just let his you guys hands. Check that out. If you want to check that out, have a style in that video. Yeah, well. right. You do that in Tarkov. Honestly, I'm pretty exhausted from dealing with all of the bullshit this wipe and what the community has thrown at me over the last couple of months. So I might be taking another break from Tarkov for a bit. Like this. We'll see what kind of feedback I get from the community and from VSG, and see if anything good comes from it. Either way, thanks for making it to the end. I appreciate you. I want to play a game that I can trust, that rewards me for my skills and my experience, that rewards me for making smart decisions under pressure. I want to play a game where I can trust what I see and trust what I hear, that when I win, I know I earned it, and when I lost, I know I didn't. I want to play a game where I can trust that the people I'm playing against are playing legitimately, a game that constantly doesn't make me question that because of poor design or poor performance. I want to play a game that respects my time. Right now, I'm not quite sure that Tarkov is that game. Honestly, this video kind of feels like a last-ditch effort for me, hoping to throw a Hail Mary to BSG and the community to try and communicate just a little bit about why I'm so exhausted. The old Tarkov experience definitely wasn't perfect. We had all sorts of performance issues, bugs, oh broken my mechanics, gosh, like glitches, out of the grass, you name like it, we had it. But for like me a and a number lizard. of my friends and community members that have been around since the good old days, it feels like something is missing. Something has been lost in the Tarkov experience. And I wholeheartedly believe it's not nostalgia, we're not looking back through rose-tinted glasses, it's not copium. When everything in the game held together just long enough, the movement, the weapons, the gear, and, yep, yeah, even the AI, the Tarkov of old provided an experience like no other. And it's this experience that I believe is at least a little bit closer to what Nikita's vision for Tarkov is. It's this oh, experience it that we want to feel video, again. The new maps, with the care. new guns, Not against the new bosses, with the, the new mechanics, yeah. in the Tarkov of today. Can't, I really do wish help, that those of you that have come uh, to Tarkov fairly recently could have been with us to experience what it was like. Alright, too much guys, we gotta go. We gotta go. We've already, we've already gone too long. Guys, good night.